Holy Ghost. Amen. O born of the altar of God, you sent it to me, O God, and defend my cause against me, O God, the people who deliver me from the deceitful, the wicked man. Thou art the God of my strength, why I am still with me from thee, and why I am the wise of the heavenly one, and the universe. For send out the light of thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me to thy holy will, and to thy dwelling. That then I may go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness, and of all my heart, and of the excellence of the of God, my God. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul, and why art thou so despised within me? O both that I trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, which is the help of my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be. O Lord God, and Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Give me unto God, and my joy and bless. Our help is in the name of the Lord. For the name of heaven and earth. I confess, Almighty God, the blessed Mary, ever virgin, the blessed Michael, the archangel, the blessed John Baptist, the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, all the saints, and then my brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I beg blessed Mary, ever virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John Baptist, the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, all the angels and saints, and then my brethren, to pray for me, Lord our God. And now, my God, have mercy upon me, forgive me thy sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. And I confess, Almighty God, that blessed Mary, the virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John the Baptist,
Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, 
and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. He who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for he will find her sitting at his gates. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and he who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. 
for when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. The wise took flasks of oil with their lamps, and as the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. The wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with them to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I wait for the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As I was looking at the liturgy for the Mass today, trying to pick a psalm, and I've always tried to pick a different psalm, something that I haven't spoken of this past liturgical year as we go through the psalms used in the Mass. And I was confronted with the fact that Psalm 130 was used at the opening of this Mass. I have preached on Psalm 130 already a couple months ago. I emphasized that it is a psalm that teaches us how to pray. I don't like to repeat things, but given the fact that we are still in the midst of the week where the church has traditionally focused its attention on the suffering souls in purgatory, to use Psalm 130 again is very apropos because Psalm 130 is the most frequently prayed prayer that the Holy Spirit gives us when it comes to the suffrages of the dead. When we pray for the holy souls in purgatory, Psalm 130 is the psalm that is to be used. And you can use the same psalm, you can use it several times over and not hit the same stuff. So I'm not going to emphasize today about the fact that it tells us how to pray, but why it tells us how to pray in the method that it does. But I will go by way of review. The last time I spoke about the psalm, I emphasized that it opens up with basically a pecking order, so to speak. How we approach God. The first line is, out of the depths have I cried to thee, O Lord. It's kind of interesting to look at the way it's worded. It's not out of the depth, singular. So there's more going on here. It can be a literary device that's used for really, really deep. The depths, plural. Not just deep, but really deep. It can also be taken as there are different types of depths that we can call to the Lord. One is this world. We are in a world where we are beset by things that are outside of our control. They can be in our own personal life, but they can also be things that are thrust upon us in society that we did not ask for. We just have to deal with it people that are living in countries that are thrust into war. You know, the people don't want it. That's a government thing. But it happens, and then the, who has to deal with it? The people. Uh, we can, in our spiritual consideration, you know, in, in this temporal world, the sin-cursed and fallen world, we can have things thrust on us that we do not like. We just have to deal with them, okay? But we cry to our Lord out of the depths of that situation. There is also the depth of our sin. You know, we are, you know, we, we not only get a, a, a pecking order in as much as how you approach God out of the depths of I cried to you, but he also makes mention of our condition when he says, for instance, O Lord, if thou would should hold to our account those iniquities we commit, who could stand? Um, we need to understand our spiritual condition before God before we start to ask him for things. We have to first to understand that there, we have no right to be heard by him, much less answered by him. We just have to appreciate his grace in answering us. 
in letting us speak to him. This is a glorious thing. But out of the depths of that spiritual condition, we cry to the Lord. Or it could just mean from the bottom of our hearts. From the depths of our very being, we cry out to the Lord. So whether it be sin, the condition of this world, or just the bottom of our heart when we feel overwhelmed, this is what the psalmist, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, presents to us as to how we call out to the Lord. I guess in a nutshell, you can picture it this way. Given our spiritual condition and the condition of this world, we have to understand that we are at the bottom of a very deep well. All of us. I'm glad I'm not at the bottom of a deep well. And then you're not reading this. This is everybody. We are all at the very bottom of a very deep well. How hard do you have to scream and carry on to get somebody at the top of the well to even hear you? It is darn near impossible. God isn't just at the top of the well. You know, the psalmist here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is telling us that we're deep in the well. But where do other places in Scripture tell us where God is? He is on his holy mountain. He is in heaven. So we're trying to scream to get someone's attention who we're at the bottom of a well and he's on a mountain. Next, it. I said it near impossible to get his attention from the bottom of the well if he's at the top. If he's on the top, it ain't happening, to use bad grammar. He's not going to hear you. Who on the top of a mountain could hear somebody screaming from a well? if it was up to the person of the well to be heard. This is where things change. God condescends. He understands our condition. This is why he's presenting it through the psalmist. He wants us to know that he understands who we are. He understands that we are screaming out of it. So he condescends. He bends down to hear. He sits there and keeps his ear peeled, so to speak, to hear us when we call unto him. This is the stage set in how we approach God that the psalmist gives us. The Holy Spirit wants us to know how to pray. But as I said, talked about that before. I want to talk today as to why. Why is it imperative that we pray correctly? Why is it imperative that we get God's attention? Because it says that, and we don't have to conjecture as to why, that there is forgiveness. And God. We call out to him from those depths that we ask that we be taken out of that condition. That takes forgiveness. We have to appreciate the fact, and I like the way it's worded too. It, it seems almost out of sync because this forgiveness verse comes right after, if thou, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? It's a question, but there is forgiveness with thee. There's really no reason for a conjunction there between those two sentences. They're not really linked, but why is but there? But there is forgiveness with you. The Holy Spirit is trying to teach us that God's different than we are. He forgives, we don't. It is very difficult for us to forgive people for doing things to us. I hear it all the time. This is not conjecture, okay? I hear it in my office. I hear it a lot of times in the confessional. I just can't forgive so and so. I can't forgive so. I always say it's not a matter of can't, it's a matter of won't. All right? That's, let's get that straight. I won't forgive that person for that. I wouldn't. We're not like God. That's why he puts, but there is forgiveness with you. God's not like us. Thanks be to him that he's not like us. Yeah. It, it is, I can stand up here and talk about, you know, it, these are traditional folks around here. They like to hear about, you know, penances and doing this and doing that and, you know, the stories of the saints wearing hair shirts and doing all this other kind of stuff. They're all good with that. But if I throw out the, like Corinthians, it says, you are not to take a brother or sister to court. You are to suffer the wrong. Oh, but you don't understand what they did at, St. Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, doesn't give a caveat. He doesn't care how bad you've done wrong. As a matter of fact, the worse you've been done wrong and you deal with it, then that's more meritorious for you. 
You don't sue other believers. It doesn't matter what happened to you. Thus saith the Lord. And we talk about praying for our enemies. You know, I've got a lot of emails and texts. Oh, what was us? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, this is so horrible. This is so horrible. Well, when you're telling me how horrible it is, I hope that was the trigger for you to pray for the situation or for the people involved. Okay? I said in my All Souls homily, in the evening of All Souls Day, I said, you know, every time we get sad when we thought, think about a departed loved one, it's a correct thing to feel sad for them. That just might be the Holy Spirit making you sad, making you remember them, making you weep as a trigger to pray for them. You know, we're not supposed to just lament and be sorrowful because we've had a loss. We're supposed to do something about it. In that case, pray for them. So this is what we need to understand, is that there is a method to the madness, so to speak, as to why we pray. Because God's not like us. He is apt to forgive. It's his disposition to forgive. It is what he does. Look at a crucifix. There is nobody on the face of this planet that would have a child nailed to a cross to make amends with somebody else who didn't like you. We can't even get our head around that one. That's how much more he is different than us. That's why he says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than the heavens are above the earth than what you are. He's different than us. Thanks be to him. He is waiting to forgive you no matter how many times, no matter what it was, no matter for how long. And a combination of that, he's waiting to forgive. And he's already done everything that he needs you to do it in the crucifixion of his son. This is what we need to understand because why we pray is based on the mercies that we expect or that we desire, I should say. The mercies and redemption that come from the Lord. It is not to be presumed upon. This is why I harp so much on this constant mercy, 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 grace, grace, grace stuff that we hear all the time. Because if you hear it all the time, you presume upon it. And all of a sudden, the faith becomes unreal. Because if you hear about mercy and grace all the time, and that's nothing, God is nothing but merciful and gracious. When something horrendous happens in your life, all of a sudden, it's not real. If he was gracious and merciful all the time, that wouldn't have happened. And people leave. They turn their backs on the faith because they've been given a bad presentation. We don't need his mercy unless his justice is hanging our overhead. We don't need to call to him at the top of the mountains if we're not in the well. He's not our buddy. He's God. This is the way we need to approach him. This is what the psalmist said. We need to be active. We need to actively prepare to be heard. I want him to hear me. I want him to hear me. I want him to hear me. Okay, now that he hears me, I'm supposed to presume on the graces that he shows me. No. Do we not learn that from the gospel today? It's kind of interesting. Psalm 130 is a short psalm. But there are some words that are repeated in that psalm. Wait and watch. Both of those words are repeated in a very short psalm. Wait, wait, watch, watch. What was the gospel about today? Okay. A lot of people, that is a very familiar passage. The, the maidens, the older versions, it's virgins. Those are people in the church. Okay? God doesn't say, let me give you a parable. There were five wise virgins, maidens, and they were in the church, and there were five that were in the world, they were unwise. No, he starts the parable out, the kingdom of God is like this. There are ten maidens. Five of them are wise, and five of them are foolish. God is telling us that in the church militant, the church here, that there are wise people and that there are foolish people. The wise prepare themselves. They live a life of faith. The foolish don't. 
Who are the foolish? The foolish are the ones that show up at Mass on Sunday, and that's it. They do it out of a habit. Because mommy and daddy did it, and grandma and grandpa did it. That's foolish. They're not prepared. Do they have lamps? Yes. Are they burning? Yes. What happens? Why are we here? Why are we in this church? Because we're preparing ourselves for, should be, preparing for the coming of the bridegroom, our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know when he's coming back. And this parable tells us that we need to be ready for when he does. And if you're not, there are dire consequences. Because when the bridegroom, our Lord Jesus Christ, comes back and the church militant, us, are taken into account, there are wise and they're foolish. And the wise get to go to the supper. Where do we know from Scripture that he's talking about heaven? And he took the five wise and they went to heaven and he shut the door. And the others came and they knocked and said, Oh Lord, we're ready now. We're... I never knew you. That should scare the daylights out of people in the church. It should scare you to death because Matthew 7, 20 and following speaks particularly about that. Many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord, have we not done this? Have we not done that in your name? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? And he's going to look at them and say, depart from me, I never knew you. They call him Lord. They think he is, but he's not because they're not prepared. And our Lord's stats, in this one, they're actually pretty good. Here's 50-50. Five wise, five foolish. Generally, the Lord speaks, the stats are lower than that. Many are called, but few are chosen. Heck, in the liturgy of the hours this morning, the gospel reading from Luke, many, they came to, Lord, are there only a few that are going to be saved? What does our Lord respond? Oh, no, everybody's going to heaven because I'm so gracious and merciful. He doesn't say that. He said, prepare yourself to enter by the narrow gate. And then he gets into the few thing again. Our Lord's stats are that fewer people are going to be in heaven than are not. So the whole nonsense that we hear now about everybody gets to go because he's so gracious and merciful is a bold-faced, out-and-out lie. Is it a humanist pre presentation of our faith? And it has nothing to do with the way Jesus presents it. We need to prepare ourselves. This is a reality, and there are dire consequences if we don't. This is what we have to understand, and this makes our faith real. This is what we have to understand. That sounds really heavy, but we should have absolute confidence in the fact that God will, if we prepare ourselves, be ready for us, and will redeem us. He will forgive us. This is that holy hope that we have in mind, because in the psalm, it speaks of waiting, 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 watching, 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 because after we do that, there is hope. The second reading today, St. Paul talking about both the church living and the church suffering in purgatory. He says that he's telling him those things that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. So the psalmist talks about hope. St. Paul talks about hope. This is this holy hope, it's one of the theological virtues. Faith, hope, and charity. It's not a hope that's a conjectural thing. It's not a hope of, oh, maybe that'll happen. It's definitive. God has proven that to us. As I said before, it's his disposition to forgive us of our sins. When the apostles look at our Lord and they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Not that we don't have a whole book of Psalms that have taught us how to pray. You know, we're kind of dense. You know, the apostles. But teach us how to pray. Okay, pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, petition, 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 forgive us our trespasses. Our Lord is letting us know that it is God's disposition to forgive us. The model prayer that we pray, and we pray it all the time, when we pray that part, that tells us that God is waiting for us and is disposed to forgive us. And it also, because of the apostles, how do we pray? 
it gives an it gives us an obligation he's ready to forgive you and you are obliged to ask him to forgive you but there is a caveat to that forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Because Jesus throws out a little commentary after one of the gospel passages. Because if you don't forgive others, their trespasses against you, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. And we need that to get into heaven. Okay? So what the Lord is saying is, you better forgive others their trespasses, you're not going to heaven. And so we need to work on that one. As difficult as it may be, we need to work on it. Because we're not like God. But this hope is something that comes from our preparing ourselves. His willingness to forgive and to pardon and obliging us to prepare ourselves. That's the gospel today. Yeah? It, it, do not presume on his graces. Do not presume that others are going to do things for you because did you notice that one little thing? Hey, Hey, uh, it's night, and it's like, and our lamps might not burn long enough. Give us some of your oil. No, go get your own. Well, that's not very Catholic. They weren't charitable and shared their oil. What do they get for it? They get to go to heaven because they were stingy with their own preparations. You know, it's not about them being stingy with their own preparation. They're like, uh-uh, you didn't prepare. I did. And I'm going to go meet the bridegroom because I'm prepared. Go try to prepare. And they go and they try, but what happens? I never knew you. That's scary. This is why we prepare ourselves. This is your faith. This is why it's hard. This is why you don't need to hear all the time about mercy, 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 grace, 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 although that's a thing. We don't need his mercy unless his justice is hanging over our head. You know, we had a year of mercy a few years ago. I, w I was always at a loss that we didn't have a year of justice beforehand or after. Okay, because you don't need one without the other. This is the reality of things. Our faith is a real faith. Our faith is a faith to be lived and you don't get a get out of hell free card because you show up here on Sundays. It's living a life that prepares to meet our Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe in what God the Father Almighty made with heaven and earth. Father, to pronounce our hope. Stephen, our bishop, 
His Holiness Benedict XVI, John, the Bishop of Orlando, and to all bishops and other sacred ministers, especially Jason, priest, Patrick, deacon, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that will be part of due reverence. They may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. O good O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, the rejoicing of thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Every most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. <coughs> And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseech thee to be merciful, grant the fullness of joy of thy love and service, and to grant us grace and to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all thy saints. And with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our mediator and advocate of thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory. Remember me, O Lord, King of all power, and put a well-ordered speech in my mouth, that my words may be pleasing in thy sight. that this, my sacrifice, and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. 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 
praise the Lord in his name for our good and all his holy church. The Lord, who hast ordained this sacrifice to be the propitiation for our sins and the means whereby of thy loving kindness we are restored unto salvation, mercifully grant that these our oblations may be acceptable in thy sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you.
to be delivered with eternal damnation. Do not put them forward by the elect. Thou safe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Qui pre die quam patetator acipit panem in sanctus ac radamiris manus suas. In elevatis oculus a cela mate deum patrum suum omnipotentem, ibigatias agens, benedicis, pregi, dedique discipulis sui dicens, accipite et manducate ex hoc omnes, hoc est enim corpus mei, corpus vobis trade. Servants and thy holy people, also remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord, as also his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascended into heaven, do offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty the true victim, the holy victim, the immaculate victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Thou take to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance, and to accept them, even as thou didst thou take to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice of the immaculate victim, which the high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech thee, Almighty God, to command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angels to thine altar on high, the sight of thy divine majesty that all we who have this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us, sealed with the seal of faith, who sleep the sleep of peace. Them, o Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing, of light, and of peace. To us sinners also, thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, thou save the grants of pardon and fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, but with all thy saints within his fellowship, we beseech thee to admit us, that weighing our merit and pardoning our offenses, and granting us forgiveness. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, O oh Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, thus sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon us. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, to the O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but be sure of me, my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but be sure of me, my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but be sure of me, my soul shall be healed.
Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank you that without us we have seen these holy mysteries with the spirit of food and most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as the church of our life may be remitted towards us, and we have every members in corporate the remains of the body of thy Son, the blessed thy company of all living people, and are also heirs of the throne of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son, and we humbly seek thee, O Heavenly Father, so that to assist us with thy grace, we may continue in that holy fellowship, and who all such works thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Dean, and the Holy Ghost, the Almighty and Glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, who hast vouchsafed to bestow upon us the sustenance of everlasting life, we humbly beseech thee that those things which we have received with our lips, we may ever inwardly seek in purity of heart. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater, Ephirus, Espiritus Sanctus. Amen. Amen. The Mass is at the depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John the Divine. Our Lord, Lord is the Lord. Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same with the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There's a man said for God, his name was John. The same came for a witness, a bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but said, bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But his men received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Amen. 